And you'll notice here that this isn't a kind of a uniform teeth looking uh, sort of uh, punch holes, you know, rightly or wrongly. You know, I might be um, uh, criticised for this, but I feel like if you want a good aesthetic result in, in anterior teeth, you're going to be have to, to removing all of the decay, and we're talking infected and affected dentin. You know, we uh, compare it to uh, uh, before, and, um, you know, we when we sat the patient up and we handed him the mirror, he was, like, really, really, really happy. So, hello, welcome to uh, this week's clinical case, which is not a root canal. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got some hardcore uh, fans of this channel and there'll be, uh, there'll be an outcry because it's not a root canal this, uh, this week. But um, this is, um, I feel like this is a, an interesting case um, because this is just going back to absolute basics. And also I have a new toy, um, as you can see in the background here. I've got the, uh, the, the Zumax OMS 3000 Pro and I'm just checking out its uh, 4K video capabilities. As you can see here that the... the the old, you'll see here the video is uh, is is absolutely crystal clear and fantastic. Um, so what I would say is uh, watch out for a uh, a new uh, review video of this of this very microscope. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I just love 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 working with it. So I hope you enjoy the uh, the, the 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 video uh, footage from this uh, microscope. But like I say, um, before we get into the case, um, what I would say is, you know, 50% of the people who watch these videos are non-subscribers. So if you could just do one thing, it's quick, it's easy, it's free. It's just a hit subscribe button. It pushes the channel along. It pushes me along. It gives me the um, encouragement to do more and more videos like this. And also we've got a membership program. The membership program um, gives you early access to content. And also um, it's it's got exclusive content so uh, the channel essentially is more endodontic based so we've got a fantastic access video in here just um, uh, d uh, uh, for members only and also we've got the second part of our newly qualified dentist um, survival guide video so we'll get into the case I'm going to go straight to the video here and we can see here that this uh, patient has got a um, significant amount of decay on his central incisors and also on his lateral incisors and this is um, uh, this is a significant aesthetic detriment to this patient. And um, what you'll see at the end is you'll see a fantastic transformation. But the first thing we're going to do, of course, we're going to place rubber dam. And in this case, this patient's got a little bit of invocation, maybe a little bit of crookedness to the teeth. So to place rubber dam in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the rubber dam over the teeth, make a little mark, and then um, uh, make my uh, sort of punch holes with these marks. And you'll notice here that this isn't a kind of a uniform teeth looking uh, sort of uh, punch holes but this is a bespoke to the patient's uh, patient's mouth and in 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 theory this should make the rubber dam fit and much better when you're using rubber dam you know you should go on a rubber dam course if you've not been on one before and what you'll notice with the rubber dam is the uh, the nurse is invaluable in these sorts of situations so you can get the nurse just to sort of stretch the rubber dam over the teeth as you just provisionally for now just um um, uh, sort of floss the the contacts to push the rubber dam through. Later on, of course, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be sort of tidying it up a little bit. But the best thing to do is just to get it on. And we'll notice here that the rubber dam clamp didn't fit very well. So in this case, I'm just gonna very very quickly put the rubber dam on the other side, and then I am going to place the clamp on an unpunched hole on a tooth behind, and that's absolutely fine to do. So once we have um, placed the the, the the teeth through the holes I am going to readjust uh, the rubber dam frame so what I like to do is to like to fold over the part portion of the rubber dam near the nose and just readjust uh, the the frame so the frame isn't too, riding too high, high up and then once we have got the 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 holes uh, through the teeth we just um, what we're trying to do is try to roll the rubber dam underneath the the, uh, the the gingival tissues and we can see here now that everything looks really really nice 
all rubber dammed up and ready to uh, remove the decay. And when we assess the decay, we can see that there's that we've got uh, undermined enamel. We've got enamel which needs to be removed, and also we've got um, we've got we've got decay. We've 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 got this infected dentin, and we've got this affected dentin. Um, the teeth are vital, so what I need to do is I need to uh, use, uh, be very, very careful with our slow hand piece. In this case, I'm using a ceramic burr. Apparently, these are from Comet. Uh, these don't uh, generate uh, as much heat as maybe a stainless steel um, uh, 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 rose head, and this is going to be kind to the pulp. And then... Um, I noticed that the, these ceramic burrs um, are probably a bit too thick to get into all the little nooks and crannies of the cavity. So I'm just using a smaller stainless steel rose head. And, um, you know, rightly or wrongly, you know, I might be um, uh, criticised for this, but I feel like if you want a good aesthetic result in, in anterior teeth, you're going to be have to, to removing all all of the decay and we're talking infected and affected dentin um, I feel like if you uh, well remove the vast majority of it you can see here there's a little bit left if you leave any affected dentin um, yeah it's 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 relatively hard but it's gonna affect the the color of the final uh, restoration so in this case just use your due diligence you know just 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 be mindful but you you're likely gonna have to remove a lot of uh, uh, tooth tissue a lot more tooth tissue than you would if it was a posterior tooth and then we start to remove the decay on the distal aspect of the upper right one and um, in this case um, I uh, I um, remove the undermined enamel, I start to drill out the, the distal decay, and um, what I don't notice is I have ever, 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 ever so slightly caught uh, the enamel of the tooth uh, next to it. You can see here, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of uh, enamel plasty, as we call it. Um, and I suppose this is a this is a great advocate for using like a kind of a wedge guard. So this is like a wedge with like a metal strip on it. Um, but I feel like this uh, this this sort of enamel plasty is very uh, very very minor. Um, and um, once we have cleaned up the uh, this this upper right upper right one here, um, what I am going to do is I am going to I'm going to I'm going to adjust that. So um, I'm just going to use very very small adjustments with a very very uh, fine yellow uh, uh, needle tipped burr. This is just to remove uh, any uh, sort of um, uh, darkness to the enamel. Um, it's it's only the tiniest tiniest little bit. I'm also it's quite jagged in this area, so I want to make sure the enamel margin is quite is is quite smooth. This is then ready for our uh, composite filling, and then I'm just going to use a finishing strip just to um, make sure the uh, distal uh, the mesial aspect of the upper uh, right two is. Uh, is is nice and smooth. This is so we can get a nice fluted shape when we when when we come to restore the upper right one. You can see here that it looks nice and uh, and cleaned up. Now you wouldn't even notice there's been a, an enamel plasty as we like to as like we like to call it. Um, we've finally got a bit of decay left in the upper left too. Again, I'm being super super careful not to damage the adjacent tooth. Um, it's a bit easier in this case because obviously we are looking directly at the tooth now. There's an argument to say that we need to go from behind. I think um, in this case, going from behind probably will cause more damage. So in, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go um, through the front. But if you've got the chance to either uh, go from the back or from the front of a tooth, you always want to uh, maintain the, the enamel on the surface of the tooth, mainly because it looks aesthetically uh, much better. But it's the same kind of protocol. We're just going to use a succession of different sized uh, rose heads just to remove uh, the vast majority of the uh, of the of the de decay and then um, this uh, um, OMS uh, 3000 Pro has a anti-reflective uh, lens and uh, what this does is it's kind of like a polarizing lens and it helps you um, match the shade of the teeth much uh, easier. So sometimes when you've got the glare of the lights and you've got um, you've got saliva and all like these sorts of things that can affect your vision on choosing the correct composite color. But with this polarizing lens, you can see here with this close up is that 
when we use this polarizing lens, we've got um, we've got an A. We've I've placed like a tiny little bit of dollop of A3 and a tiny dollop of A2, um, and then sometimes I like to light cure that because sometimes the composite changes color slightly, and then this gives us a little bit more of an indication about which is a better color match. And and strangely enough, I feel like the A2 is a better color match in this uh, situation, but. Um, usually when I'm looking at teeth, I think, oh, maybe these teeth look a bit more yellow than A2. But So this is a, another fantastic thing about using this OMS um, 3000 Pro microscope is that, um, you know, it's got this polarizing uh, uh, or anti-reflective uh, lens, which is essentially polarizing. Um, so we've chosen the correct um, uh, uh, composite. We're ready to prepare the, the cavities. In this case, I'm using etch and, and bond in this case. So um, we're giving it a little bit of a bit of an etch, bit of a clean. I'm gonna replace that um, that uh, that clear strip because uh, you know it's got water on it and all sorts. We'll give it a little bit of a bit of a bond. We're using eye bond in this case. And um, and I feel like you know there are many, many, many different ways of um, of 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 um, using a matrices or using something to um, uh, uh, restore uh, mesial or distal aspects of uh, of, of of teeth, um, but um, in this case, I feel like you know that the flat edge is 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 pretty straightforward on this upper left too. So I feel like we're going to get a nice uh, sort of contour of the the upper left two here with a clear strip. Of course, I'm just going to remove some of the excess here because I don't want this to kind of overly um, overfill because it would be difficult for me to, um, to shape uh, later on. Um, but, uh, you know, we just give it a little bit of a um, uh, a tight marginal adaptation here with the clear strip. Get the uh, get the nurse to do uh, some um, uh, do do the do the light cure for you, and it's essentially the same um, protocol for the for the upright too. We're then ready to uh, restore the centrals, and again, um, you know, I'm using an, then an etch and bond technique. I also what you'll notice is once we've etched and once we bond, I like to flow. Uh, um, a very very thin layer of uh, flowable composite in the base of the cavity. Um, this um, obviously makes sure you flow it into all the little sort of nooks and crannies of the the cavity, and it and it also provides you um, uh, the ability to place your composite without getting uh, uh, too many voids. Um, you know, and uh, the great thing about this uh, this this flow is that once you've placed it in the base of the cavity, you can kind of manipulate this uh, quite easily to place it in areas which uh, which you um, you know you, you need to flow it into. So maybe there's like a very very small overhang. You just use like a little bit of a probe just to put place it in in the bit that you want it to. And, uh, and of course, similarly, if you've placed too much flow, it's easy just to sort of f uh, sort of flick out ever ever so slightly. And this this really essentially is you putting the foundations down for the, uh, the, the the final restoration. And as mentioned before, sometimes with centrals, what I uh, do like to do is I've got a paladin system and sometimes I use, like to use the wedges, but in a horizontal way. And this gives like a quite a nice um, sort of fluted shape. But again, I feel like um, in this case, using a clear strip to, 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 to restore these teeth is is adequate enough i think that um because we've saved the sort of buccal surface of these teeth and um, that gives us that kind of that maintains that fluted shape that we've got and then when we uh you know we we take away the yellow uh, uh, uh filter here um and then we give it a bit of a polish up and it's already looking really really nice um when um, we've filled the centrals, I'm just using a rug rugby shaped uh, fast hand piece here just to get that kind of palatal shape of the tooth. And then I'm a massive proponent of using uh, white stone uh, burrs. I used to use soft flex discs all the time, um, but I feel like these, 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 uh, uh, these um, uh, white stone burrs uh, get, give a really, really nice polish. And then I also do like to use a sickle scaler 
to remove some of the excess sometimes it's bond or whatever and we all know to see i give it a little bit of a flick up and um, my sickle sailor actually uh, breaks in, in in two and then um, you know this is another sort of strong advocation for using a rubber dam not only does it help you uh, create a clean working working field and you know you've got a nice dry working field for the composite imagine if the patient had swallowed this really really sharp instrument so again another really mindful fact about using a uh, rubber dam and then we're ready for our, our kind of final polishing we remove uh, the rubber dam completely we get the patient to bite together we we'll obviously get the patient to do some protrusive movements you notice here there's a bit of flash on the uh, distal aspect of this this upper right one again using the other sickle scaler, scaler just to um, you know remove some of the excess bond and some of the excess uh, composite we check the occlusion everything looks really really nice and you know we look at the the final result and it looks fabulous it looks really really nice it looks natural you know we uh, compare it to uh, uh, before and um, you know we when we sat the patient up and we handed him the mirror he was like really 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 happy so nice result thanks for watching again usually this is an endodontic channel but i just wanted to show you the uh, the oms uh, pro in, um, in 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 all its glory you know you can see that the um, the video looks absolutely uh, fantastic and, um, and and obviously the 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 different uh, uh, functionality of the microscope is also really really good so we've got the polarizing lens which I use all the time now even when I'm not using the microscope same just using my loops to do a filling I'll pull the OMS over and I'll put the polarizing lens on and then use it to 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 check that we've got um, the correct shade we've also got a fluoresce mode on it as well which um, again watch out for the full uh, full length video on this and um, I'll see you next week in the next video hopefully it'll be a root canal case next time okay have a nice day and I'll see you next week bye bye